Okay, let's look at some row serial bits and discuss how the current available diagrams within Visual Studio Team Architect Edition helps us with a better collaboration between the different roles throughout the application lifecycle. So let me switch to my virtual machine. Uh, as you see right now, uh, I already opened an existing project. More useful to show some existing code rather than creating diagrams on the fly. This is a real life project we are doing right now within SOGT. It's work in progress. And let me briefly explain what this solution does. Uh, it, it, it's going to be a kind of assessment tool and that one is going to be used by our test managers to measure the maturity of test lines. And the diagram you see right now gives a good overview of what the application should do. Um, this high level use case diagrams we are creating together with a business. And it gives us needs to are the needs of the application and yeah, it really shapes our mind what the application should do. We also created together with this use case diagram, this business use case diagram, uh, a kind of business activity diagram and this gives us and the business uh, a, a good overview what the application should do, what kind of activities um, needs to take place and that kind of stuff. And between these two business diagrams there's a kind of iterative process and it gives a lot of discussion. Um, afterwards um, we are going to create some more detailed use cases based on that business use case and this one is made together with domain experts and information analysts and these are more formal use cases um, and uh, this is it's actually a kind of description kind of visualization of the requirements what the application should do and one very nice thing is also in place we or actually the testers are making an activity diagram together with the domain experts and the information analysts and they are going to use these diagrams to create their test cases. So at this level uh, the requirements are going to be tested already because test is involved and they are going to use this information in at the end of the project for the user acceptance tests. So that's really useful information and really good collaboration between the different roles. Meanwhile, the architects are going to create a component diagram and this is a high level view how the application looks like, how the components look like, what the interfaces are between the different components. And, um, and as you can see, it also fits almost the same as our solution structure. For example, we've got over here our core components. This one is over here with the three nested components in there and those are over there. <coughs> and it's really useful to have beside the business use cases, the high level needs of the business, the more detailed use cases and the activity diagram testers are going to use to test the application uh, at the same solution structure in the same solution structure as your sources uh, and the benefit is that people who are going to work on the solution um, 
they can very easily access the information they need to, to implement uh, their functionality. For example, uh, at this level, the CPI UI, that serves center manager as just one interface and that's reporting and the one who is working on that can very easily see what the interfaces are and where he's working on. And where he's working on, you can also see in the business activity diagram, the business use case diagram, and this gives him a, a very good overview where the functionality he's going to make fits in the overall solution. Most of the time that kind of information is only available in words or somewhere on the project portal or even in somebody's mind. So at this way when he do he does get latest in source control, in the source repository, he already gets this information and can very easily access it. Um, what the architects also do is a kind of iterative process between this component diagram and different sequence diagrams. There's just one in place over here right now. And in this sequence diagram, they are going to replay a, kind of a scenario which is described in the detailed activity diagrams. So going to log in, manage groups, and that kind of stuff. And when you can replace replay that scenario with a sequence diagram, he knows his component design is well done. Uh, he also can see if his, his design is good, is, is, is valid, uh, when for example one component does everything in, in, a, in a specific scenario, he knows uh, maybe I've done something wrong with separation of concerns and let's redesign the component diagram. And that works pretty good. Uh, and with that, test architects are connected and work together to get a better component diagram. The developers and designers are going to dive further in the solution and make the real implementation. And as you can see, uh, they designed over here the logical class diagram. This is the first design of implementation of this core component. And you can see over here they use an, an interface, and that's an interface you can find back in the component diagram. And uh, one nice thing that's also been done is these first interfaces or these interfaces and we implementing those as services uh, are implemented over here as separate solutions, as separate projects. And we use the web service software factory for that. And yeah, that, that gives us good code generation and uh, it, it gives a, a good overview how the that service interface is implemented. And actually, these operations can track back to the sequence diagram, the get question, save question. So you can, can validate everything against each other, and everything is connected together. And that's the useful part, having so much models available right now within Rosario.